In the previous lecture, we discussed on three-phase half-wave uncontrolled rectifier. In this lecture, we are going to focus on the full-wave uncontrolled rectifier. So, the outline, let us see first. We will discuss first the introduction of three-phase full-wave uncontrolled rectifier. What is the circuit configuration? The working principle? The load voltage and current waveforms? We will do the mathematical analysis. Determine the performance characteristic. What are the advantages and disadvantages? The applications. The comparison of this particular rectifier with the other types. The design considerations and the conclusions. Let us first see the introduction. How do we define three-phase full-wave uncontrolled rectifier? Which is the one which converts the three-phase AC source to the output DC using the diodes in a bridge configuration. So, compared to the previous discussion on half wave, here we will be having the bridge configuration to get the full wave utilization to get the DC and again this will be using only the diodes. So, it is uncontrolled. When we use thyristors, then we get control rectifier. So, in this configuration, we will be using six diodes which will be arranged in two groups. One is the positive and another one is the negative. No control over output voltage will be there as we are using the diode and it will be having the pure passive rectification. These are also known as three-phase bridge rectifier or gauge bridge. So, the famous name that we use is three-phase bridge rectifier and since we are using the diode, it is uncontrolled one and we will be taking the full wave utilization to get the output as DC. So, these are widely used in certain industrial applications which are having the high efficiency greater than 95%, low ripple content 4.2% and high power handling capability. So, these are the advantages because of which industrial applications prefer full wave over the half wave. So, we can see the circuit configuration here. So, this is a full wave bridge rectifier which is connected in the form of star 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 means the primary of the transformer is connected in star configuration and the secondary is also connected in star so the circuit which shows here basically uh, shows that this is the delta connected primary however it is written as star star so we will be taking the star star configuration or delta star and uh, in the output uh, we can have the neutral point, which neutral point we can use for providing the single phase load also. So, here we can see that we are having the diodes, which are total six diodes are there and we can use these diodes, one in the positive group and another is the negative group to get the output across the load as the load voltage. The working principle here, the conduction scheme when we talk about then the diodes will conduct in pairs. With each pair will be conducting for 120 degree. So, the each pair of the diode is basically conducting for 120 degree. And as we have already discussed that there are positive group and negative group. So, in the previous circuit, D1, D3 and D5 are basically falling in the positive group. D2, D4 and D6 are falling in the negative group. So, these depend upon how they are connected to positive terminal or the negative terminal. At any instant, one diode from each group will be conducting. So, one diode will be conducting at each instant and the diode with highest positive voltage in each group will be conducting. The conduction switches will be every 60 degree for the input cycle. So, the key point to be remember is the output that we get which is a pulsating DC with 6 pulses per AC cycle resulting in low ripple content. So, the ripple content will be low because we are getting more pulses per AC cycle. Conduction interval, if we see in tabular format, this is the diode conduction scheme where we have 6 pulses. So, there are 6 intervals and the angle ranges are in the 60 degree. So, we have from 0 to 60, 60 to 120 and so on till the final one cycle that is 300 to 360. So, conducting diodes will be from 0 to 60 degree, there will be D1 and D6 will be conducting and you will be getting the output voltage across the AC terminal. So, 60 to 120 diode 
D1 and D2 will be conducting and we will get the voltage across the terminal AB. So in this case, all the diodes will be conducting over 160 degree conduction and we will be getting the line voltage across the terminals. The voltage and the current waveform, if we see it, then the three phases input, which is the three phase AC input are shown as R, Y and B and the load current and the diode conduction for diode D1 is only shown. So these are the load voltage and current waveform for the bridge rectifier configuration. So if we discuss this in detail, what we have is the mathematical analysis where the input voltages are basically three phase. So we have phase A, phase V and phase C which is having balanced uh, supply. So the maximum amplitude remains the same which is Vm and these are 120 degree phase difference among each other and we get the line to line voltage between the two phases A, B, B, C and C, A is equal to root 3 times the phase voltage as the magnitude and they are also differ from each, each other by 120 degree. The phase A and the line B, A, B will be differ from each other by 30 degree. So we can see here each phases will be corresponding line degree will be differ by 30 degree only. So this is a concept of three phase system. The average DC output voltage that we get VDC is equal to root 3 root 3 by pi into Vm. Vm is the maximum amplitude. And if we can do this derivation in terms of line voltage, then we take as Vm equal to Vl by root 3. If we do the calculation, we get the DC voltage as 0 0.955 times the RMS line to line voltage. RMS output voltage, if we uh, get which is VRMS with the calculation using the formula of the AC cycle, we get 0 0.956 times the line voltage. A ripple factor here, uh, if we calculate in terms of RMS and DC, we get 4.2% as the ripple factor. So the key matrices in the performance characteristic are basically the efficiency, which is greater than 95%, Ripple factor is 4.2%. Form factor and crest factor all lie close to 1 or approximately equal to 1. The ripple frequency is 6 times the input frequency. The power factor will be depend on what type of load we are using. For the resistive load, the power factor will be close to 1. And with smoothing inductor, better power factor will be there for more complex situation. And input current will be containing the harmonics. Load regulation we have to do which is the output voltage drop will be there due to the diode forward voltage drop which is approximately equal to 0 0.7 volt per diode. The source will have certain impedance and there will be commutation overlap when the load is inductive in nature. So we have to take this drop into account when we do the load regulation. Some of the advantages of this configuration of full wave is having the high efficiency. So minimal power loss will be there in the diode as the efficiency is greater than 95%. Ripples are also low around 4.2%. Power handling capability is suitable for high power applications. It is a simple design so no control circuitry is required. The operation is also robust and reliable with minimal maintenance. The transformer utilization factor is better compared to other single phase certifiers and the filter requirement is also lower due to high ripple frequency. There are certain disadvantages of this configuration as well. So there is no voltage control. So output voltage cannot be varied because we are using the diode. Three phase supply requirement will be there. So not always available three phase supply. High component count because we are using six diodes compared to the previous configuration which is having the less number of diodes. Input current harmonics will be there. So filtering response, filtering will be required to remove these harmonics. Power factor is poor especially with capacity filtering. Commutation problem will be there when the load is inductive in nature. Limited flexibility as it cannot handle varying load requirement. So as although it is able to take more power but when the load varies a lot it cannot handle it properly. Some of the application in industries power we will be discussing where we are using this configuration for the motor drives to electroplating system, welding equipment aluminium smelting, electric R furnaces. These are industrial applications. 
power applications we are using in HVDC transmission system, battery charging stations, renewable energy interfaces, UPS systems, and railway traction systems. Selection criteria depends upon that the power rating, if it is greater than 5 kilowatt, three phase supply is available. Low ripple content is the what we required and high efficiency is very important. In such cases, we can go with the full wave rectifier. Now, this is the full comparison of single phase half wave, single phase full wave, three phase half wave and three phase full wave rectifier. In terms of the parameters, which are the ripple factor, efficiency, transformer utilization factor, peak inverse voltage of the diodes, number of diodes required, ripple frequency and the applications. So, if we see the ripple factor is minimum in case of three phase full wave rectifier this is the lowest and it is highest in case of single phase half wave rectifier efficiency again it is greater than 95 percent which is comparable with three phase half wave rectifier so these two more are same uh, as compared to the single phase it is just the 2.5 times transformer utilization factor if we see so it is very good around 95 percent utilization factor is there in half wave we are having only 67.5 percent whereas in another half wave single phase it is less as compared to the full wave peak inverse voltage for diode will be root 3 times the vm because it has to handle the line voltage so root 3 will be coming and number of diode is more this is a disadvantage which is 6 as compared to 3 diodes in case of half wave rectifier ripple frequency is 6 times the fundamental frequency and applications we are using for high power applications halfway we can go with the medium power and when we require low power we can go with single paste half wave rectifier configuration now the design consideration we need to select the diode properly depending upon the current rating where safety margin has to be there with the forward current will be greater than 1.05 times the DC current the voltage rating with the reverse voltage should be greater than 2.45 times the peak inverse voltage of the diode so this compared to the line voltage surge current has to be considered because inverse current capability of the diode should be there thermal management we need to do so proper heat sink design has to be done for the power dissipation junction temperature consideration has to be done there should be cooling for high power application we need to protect this circuit using the snubber circuit for voltage spikes, fuses or circuit breaker for overcurrent protection, surge arrestors should be there for transient protection. So whenever we design this uh, rectifier, we have to take care of the thermal management, the protection against over voltage, overcurrent and proper selection of the diodes. So let us conclude with the summary that three phase full wave uncontrolled rectifier are very essential for power electronic devices which can offer excellent performance in terms of low ripple and high efficiency. It is a robust design because you have simple, reliable and maintain, maintenance free operation. Wide application is there, suitable for high power industrial applications. Economic solution as it is cost effective for uncontrolled DC power conversion. The future trend research that we do in this uh, three phase full bail is basically we need to integrate with active power factor correction. So previous lecture we have discussed uh, some of the power factor correction techniques and why the power factor correction is required. So we need to integrate this hybrid designs uh, combining with control rectifiers, enhanced harmonic mitigation technique and smart grid integration capabilities. So a lot of researches are going on in these uh, areas also. And uh, we have completed now the rectifiers, uh, whether it is single phase, half wave, single phase, full wave. Uh, the three phase half, three phase full and all uh, in the uncontrolled situation that is uncontrolled rectifier. Controlled rectifier we will be discussing in a separate group. Uh, next lecture we will see some of the performance matrices uh, combining all these rectifiers and discuss their uh, advantages and disadvantages. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.